clocking in at number 10, Xiang Zibu from China had the black pieces against Magnus Carlsen. This was played at the World Cup in Georgia. This was one of the upsets of the tournament. After offering a martial-like sacrifice of a pawn on e5, Carlsen accepted it with knight takes e5. Bu with the black pieces took the knight and played bishop d6. After rook e1, the table was set. Here, Sangzibu shocked Carlsen and shocked the world. It's not the most difficult sacrifice, but the stage is so high that this is our 10th best move of 2017. Sangzibu played bishop takes h3, crashing down on the white king side. Carlsen had no choice. He took the bishop, but the black attack is too strong. With the knight, the bishop and the queen moving in, Carlsen had to defend the mate on h2, rook b8, Bu introduced more pieces into the attack after d4, f5. Carlsen tried his best with bishop to b3 pinning the knight, but Bu calmly played c6 defending the knight and after f4 he even allowed himself another quiet move. With the white pieces tangled up on the queen side. Carlsen couldn't find the defense here. He took on d5 and tried to develop, but as it takes and g5, everything is active. The rook can come to the g file, the queen is active, the bishop is good, the pawns are menacing. Carlsen tried to make a run for it, king to f2, but it was too late. Boot took on f4, and at the queen f3, he regained the piece. Being a pawn up, he even allowed Carlsen to get one pawn back, but with the menacing pieces, the mate threat on g1, again it was too much. And Carlsen's main trump, well, Boo's main trump was the 8th pawn here, and it simply started to run. The 8th pawn kept running, Carlsen tried to make something happen in the defense, but after the queen trade, Bu finished the job with another nice move, rook g1, and this game is over. Carlsen resigned, and Bu shocked the world. Knight takes g1, h2, is simply a queen. So nothing to be done. At number 9, we have another win for black. With the white pieces, the talented Polish Grandmaster Darius Wirs. With the black pieces, Sunidulf Naranyan from India. This was played in the Erfurt in early 2017. Here, black has the upper hand, but he, he found a most amazing way to take advantage of all the pluses in his position. I encourage you in all these positions to take your time. But here, black played a seemingly impossible move. What is the most impossible move? F6. This is truly amazing. If G takes F6, which was not played, then the knight is hanging. I simply take it. And if E takes F6, the E file is crucially opened and f3 comes with devastating effect. To understand the difference, let's continue with king takes f3, knight takes g5, and now if h takes g5, we understand that the king can't go anywhere, it's checkmate. If we compare the original position and play f3 immediately, king takes f3, and now if you try knight takes g5, the difference is the king can run, king to e2. Black still has contemplate, but the king is running. So opening the e-fall proved very crucial and f6 is our number 9th move of 2017. The game finished after f3, king g1, knight takes g5. The queen is coming into h3. So he tried for some counterplay, but the queen came in anyway. A desperate queen sacrifice didn't change anything. Rookie 7 and king h8. 
and mate is simply avoidable. Black wins. A nice move by Naranyan. At number 8, it's another defeat for Magnus Carlsen and at Norway Chess on Magnus home turf, Levin Aronian proved that he can be a worthy candidate against Magnus Carlsen in a World Championship match. He played a fantastic sacrifice here. It may have been preparation, but it doesn't take away from the beauty and the courage to play such a sacrifice against the world champion. Aronian played a3, offering black to take the pawn. Carlsen took the challenge, he took, he took the pawn, but now Aronian sacrificed the exchange and closed the queen out on a3. A very daring sacrifice while discounting on the power of his bishop pair, and that the queen can't defend the king. The game continued with b6, Aronian attacked on the king's side. After Carlton moved his rook to b8, Aronian moved in with a classical Greek gift sacrifice on h7, bishop takes h7. Carlton pulled the king back, and the queen came in. The black king was under attack. The game is more complicated than we can look at here in this quick video. But let's just quickly see the game. Double attack on the rooks. The bishop must move. Knight f7. And now, Ronian has plenty of pawns for the piece. And material equi equi equity is restored. With the, with the white pawns moving and being dynamic, Ronian had the better position. Carlson's pieces were doomed to passivity and after the rook joined the attack it was now Dubiton and Carlson resigned after queen h4 check the bishop is dropping fantastic game by Ronian and for this concept of a3 sacrificing a pawn in the exchange he comes in at 8 in our move of the year with the move a3. Sacrificing a pawn and an exchange. Fantastic concept. At number seven, we are in Russia. Peter Swidler is in the midst of securing his eighth. 8th, I repeat it for the third time, 8th Russian Championship. Peter Swidler had the black pieces in a Grunfeld against the strong Grandmaster Sergei Volkov. Here, Swidler's bishop is attacked. Normal minds would think about a retreat to d7, c8, or even moving bishop to c2. But not the 8th time Russian champion. It takes something special to be an 8th time Russian champion. And Swedler found e6. Just a fantastic concept. He leaves the bishop to be taken. But for what? All his pieces become active. He's threatening to win the piece back. The rook is coming in on the e-file. This rook is active. The c pawn can move, activating the bishop. And the queen has a wonderful diagonal. Let's see what happened. Bishop a6 by Volkov, he was startled by this concept by Swidler. And after c4, all of Black's pieces are becoming active. Queen a4, rook into b2. The knight move to f3, and now Black doubles on the second rank. This is getting critical for, for White. Queen c6, queen e7. The queen is coming in. A spite check by Volkov. But to no avail, bishop takes f4, and after rook f to e1, the queen moved into e3, and after king h1, Swedler delivered the checkmate, rook h2, Volkov resigned, but he can take on h2, only to be followed by rook takes h2, checkmate, what a fantastic move by Swedler, and 
shows the talent that is needed to be at this level. E6. Who would have thought of that one? I didn't, did you? Our number 7 move of the year. At number 6. The strongest female player in the world, Ho Yifan. She played a very interesting concept at the Gibraltar Masters. The move right here could be a candidate for the number 6 move of the year. But we're have, going to have a look at the whole concept. She sacrificed her queen here with knight takes d5. This could have been her move, but it's not her move. Let's have a look. Uh, Iterboria with the white pieces, he accepted the sacrifice. He took the queen. And after knight takes e2, Ho Yifan didn't take the knight, she played bishop f3. And the idea here is to pin down the king and the bishop. Ho Yifan has only two pieces for the queen. And one pawn. So that's two units of material that she's down, but the black pieces are dominating the board. Let's see what happened. The black pieces got more active on the king side. And black even had time to shut down the king side with b5 here. The queen side, excuse me. a6, there was even time for consolidation. Bishop takes g4, picking up one pawn. And after the eight pawn started moving, it was clear that black was in grave danger. The whole game is a tremendous accomplishment by Ho Yifan. After h4, bishop h2, the king found shelter on h6, and just have a look at the black pieces. They are all on the king's side, lining up against the king. The storm clouds are forming. White is in grave danger. After h3, black moved in. Knight takes h2, rook takes e5. This looks menacing. But bishop f3 was played. If now king takes h2, bishop f4 check, and h2 mate is coming. So white can't do this. And if you go here, uh, I can take the rook on e5, and then I would give mate on the h file. King g1 is mate immediately. So after bishop f3, white played king g1. So white has this threat of taking on e7 with double check. What did Ho Yifan do? She moved to number 6 on her move of the year for 2017 and she played. Knight takes f1. And the threat of h2, h1 is simply too strong. It's so strong that we can allow a rook to be captured with check. Rook takes e7. The king runs h6. It goes on a little excursion, but it's fine. Once it arrives on g4, there is nothing further. h2 is coming. Rook e8 was played, desperado. Oyevan took it. After rook check, the king simply went to h4. This threat is still alive, and not much to back, uh, that. Uh, what can do about it. The king f1, Hu Yifan protected the rook, rook d8 check, and after the king found shelter on h4, mate on d1 was imminent, and white resigned. The whole game is fantastic, and I've chosen knight takes f1 as our number 6 move of 2017. number five in December of 2017 Alpha Zero stunned the world the artificial intelligence from DeepMind destroyed Stockfish in a match and in this position it found a stunning move that the other engines took hours upon hours to find and could only appreciate after being fed the move. This was according to news stories by several reputable chess sites. 
Alpha zero plate, bishop g5. And the main idea here simply is to play knight to f6. And this threat is very hard to deal with. If black takes, which Alpha zero, which Stockfish didn't do, the knight takes g5, secures white, a lasting initiative. If queen h6, you're already in trouble because of knight takes f7. Several pitfalls of black. And the king h7, bishop b4, decides the game. So, in this variation, queen g8 is more tenacious, but queen h4 is very menacing. And the human would probably try to simplify with by trying to kick the knight, but h6 gives white the upper hand here and this variation is actually winning for white and ends in mate in the game after bishop g5 Stockfish played f5 and here a series of spectacular moves followed knight c5 bishop to e7 After knight d3, queen d6, allowing Stockfish to take on e1. Did alpha 0 take on f8? No, it didn't. It took on e1. Did it take on f8 now? No, bishop takes e4. So at the moment, white is down a rook. But white is going to regain all the material and with interest. This guy is dropping. Although, it's going to drop for white's bishop. After rook e8, however, Everything is pinned down and black is virtually without the move. After c5, the queen picks up the rook on a8 and alpha 0 is off the exchange and it had no problems converting this. A historic moment in chess alpha 0. Bishop g5 at number 5. G. Anand managed to produce some nice magic in 2017. He captured the World Rapid Championship. And in August, he had the white pieces here against Fabiano Caruana at the Sinkfield Cup. Caruana played f6 and seemingly is on the verge of equalizing. Capturing the pawn on e5, since rook takes e2 is on the agenda if white takes on f6. With a mate imminent on h2, what was white to do? Well, Wishy, the tiger from Madras, had the answer. He did take on f6, but what did he have in mind? Rook takes a2. Rook takes e2 and the mate on h2 is imminent. Wishy had calculated correctly here. f7 check. The king must go to f8, otherwise it's simply mate. I will make a rook here, just for uh, fancies. So king f8 is forced. And now, bishop takes g7, the only move. King takes g7. Still, mate is imminent, we must do something. Wish he found queen c3, check. Black must interpose something. He went with the rook, but there is slightly more fight in queen to e5 although white is still better there and probably winning however Caruana went with rook to e5 and here another nice move by Iwishi he played queen to d4 taking advantage of the fact that the pawn is threatening the queen so the rook can't take the queen so what to do queen g5 protecting the rook but now a fantastic cross pin we have a pin here on the rook, double pin, and this guy is overloaded. The black position is about to crumble. Caruana didn't find anything, he took on d4. But after f8 queens and queen to f7, he resigned as mate is imminent. Nice calculation by Anand, who shows that he has still blood in the veins. The Tiger of Madras. At number 4.
at number 3. Definitely a candidate for Game of the Year, if not a clear-cut candidate for Game of the Year. The Chinese Immortal. Ding Lirian had the black pieces against Bai Jinxi. And he sacrifices Queen with D takes C3. This whole game is fantastic. And it's perhaps difficult to select the move here, but black activated his pieces. Perhaps when starting the calculation, the most difficult move was this one. Rook to d4. This can't be captured because of the knight fork. To pick up the queen. And g4 is threatened. White has no choice, he has to stop the mate on g4. Black renews the threat. The white king is simply sent on a mission that he doesn't want to uh, take part in. Bishop h2, clearing the square here, but this sends the king off the board to g4 check. And now rook d2, hitting the queen. The rook can't, can't be captured because of knight e4 check. So here comes the knight, and the king is sent running off the board. He must capture on h5. But now, black calmly prepares to introduce the rook on a8 as the final nail in the coffin. Bishop to f4, and here it comes, rook h8 is coming, bishop h6, even this doesn't stop the idea, rook takes f2, bishop g5, but rook h8 is coming, and king g7 check. As a king takes g4, another nice move to finish the attack, knight e5, we deserve to see this game to the finish, bishop to f5. After 95, white did actually resign, but we will play this out till mate. Rook takes h6. A brilliant game by Ding Li Ran. And it was all made possible by the queen sacrifice and our number three move of 2017. Rook to d4 by Ding Li Ran. At number 2 we find the Chinese prodigy Wei Yi with the black pieces and by now it should be known that if you play the Sicilian against Wei Yi it's virtually a forced loss for black. <laughs> Here in the midst of a fantastic attack, Rook E1, Knight C5, F5, insisting on sacrificing the bishop on D5 but black doesn't want to take it, he wants to get developed but he will pay for this f takes e6 Wei Yi insists knight f5 he wants to open the e-file but black <laughs> Xing Lang Su he does not cooperate he plays queen c7 and as a prize for that he gets hit with the number 2 best move of 2017 so go ahead Wei Yi what do you have in mind here why not throw a bishop on the fire into thin air, bishop to c6, covered by nothing, attacked by two pieces. What on earth is this? Xu took with the queen. He takes with a pawn, knight takes d6, and seemingly white can just play positionally here with e5, protecting the knight and the coordination of the black pieces is so horrible that white is just winning here he can pick his poison, queen g4 to g5 rook can come in nothing to be done it's just amazing that you can play a bishop, a bishop move like this and black has no defense he took with the queen knight takes d6 king e7 and another nice move, he just left the knight Queen to g4. What on earth is this? Let's go over the alternatives. Knight d7 was played in the game. But what happens if queen takes knight? Queen takes g7. We get the rook as well. And quite quickly it's game over. Uh, no coordination and you can't defend. 
going back. King takes d6. Here, rook d1. And the geometry here in case of king c7 is simply amazing. Queen g3. Look at the rooks. They're covering the files next to the king, and it turns out you can't interpose anything. This is checkmate in two moves. Just brilliant calculation by Wei Yi. In the game, like d7 was played, but after e5, black resigned. The rook is protected. The pawn g7 will drop. Not much to be done. A nice line is rook g8, queen g5, and here you have to give up the knight with knight f6. If you go to f8, it's mate, queen to d8. So our number two move of 2017 is bishop into thin air, bishop to c6 by Wei Yi, clocking in at number two. Our number one move of 2017 was played by the Russian sensation Andrei Esipenko. This was played in Riyadh at the World Rapid Championship at the end of 2017. Esipenko with black, threatened mate with bishop to a3. After some forcing moves, queen to f3, he opened some lines, he hit the queen with knight to d4, and after knight c3 check here it is your 2017 move of the year by Andrei Azipenko it doesn't get much prettier than this prettier than this queen to b3 a true gem of a move and this is a move of the year and against none other than the minister of defense Sergei Karyakin now this can't be taken because of the beautiful checkmate. Knight takes b3. In the game, Karyakin didn't last long. B takes c3, but queen takes c3. Threatened mate on c1, so bishop b2 is forced. But here, after knight c2, Ashipenko is picking up the queen. And let's see the final moves. g3, b5, c takes b5, and rook d4. And the threats here are simply too much. Rook a4 with a threat on a2. Queen to c3 followed by rook b2. White can't defend. Karakin resigned. All made possible by the move of the year. Queen b3. And I'll leave you with this beauty here. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.